Hi everyone, so this is the part 2 of the NestJS with Auth0 integration. In the part 1, we simply talked about uh, what is Auth0, how it really works and what we are going to talk about in the NestJS with Auth0 integration. Like how you can configure the simply Auth0 application. So you can have simple authentication mechanism enabled for your React NestJS application on the client side. So this was our Auth0 profile. Here I have created these applications which I am going to configure on the React, Angular or Next.js project so that I, I, could, uh, I should be able to get the Auth0 login screen where you can enter your login username password or login with the social providers. So what we are doing here is we have already configured a UI client with Auth0 and we just simply have uh, either Angular application, React application or Next.js application. I mean it can be CSR, SSR, Swellkit, any kind of interface can be SSR or can be CSR. It needs to be some application which has configured Auth0 profile like Auth0 application, client ID and a secret. And once you do the login with the Auth0, then it is redirecting you to the login screen. Like login, and you can also configure the social providers like login with the Google, Twitter, and all through Auth0. Okay. So in response, what you will get, you will get a token. Now this token you need to carry to your Auth0 app. And that token I need to provide to my NestJS APIs because that token has been granted by Auth0 and I will be validating the token in my NestJS application. So this is just an SGS request lifecycle. Okay, what happens when the request came? You hit a middleware, guard, interceptors, pipes and controllers. And you will be sending uh, these authorization header in uh, this bearer token in the authorization header. So NestJS application, NestJS APIs will receive it that way and you already have either you can configure a middleware or a guard. This is best place is the middleware because the, that's an entry point. In the middleware, you will validate couple of things that we are going to talk in this session. First of all, check for the validity that uh, authentication token is valid or not. So these are few things you will be kind of validating, getting the access token from the authorization header, validate JWT token access token, check if token is valid, check if token is not expired, then decode the token because token contains the data which contains the user session information. Then return the token payload and set that payload decoded uh, information from the token to the request. So how would you get in the NestJS application like who is the logged in user, what is the user ID, what is the user email, what is the Auth0 ID. So that is a session information. Once you decode, once you validate, okay token is valid, you can just simply decode it and that decoded JavaScript object you can set on the request object. So in my nest JS application in the APIs, I want to know who is the logged in user that I can come to know through that request.user. So you can configure the guards then. So in the nest JS application, we are going to have two things middleware and guard. Now try to understand what the both the things will do. Middleware will just validate if token is valid. Okay. Then guards, guards are the route guards which you can configure for role based access control. You can particularly say, okay, this uh, particular create API is not allowed for the admin, maybe allowed for the admin, but for not for the creator, user or administrator. So you can have a role based authorization also that you can configure through the guard activation guards or role guards. Okay, so we are going to do use uh, middleware and these role guard or activation guards. So here middleware will set the detailed information about role in the request.user object. Once you got the user, so what is this request.user? Request.user is actually a session information. Request, which request which flows through everywhere, right? And what we are doing is on the request object, we are setting the user object. I mean, this is how we do in the simple express middlewares. We set the request.user similarly. Similarly, here on the request.user, we are setting the user session on the request object. So wherever you go, I will always have, okay, who are you? Who is this logged in user? What is his email? What is the role? So that information will be everywhere in the whole application. That is the job of the middleware. Now guard will come into the picture. Guard will check, okay, this route is allowed for the admin. Let's check who is the current logged in user. Should I allow it or not allow it? That will be decided based on the role which is there in the decoded token. So these are the six steps we are going to perform. Configure the client app, Next.js, React, Angular with the Auth0. 
access token at the client side you log in with the auth0 screen you will get the access token send access token in the authorization header add a middleware in the express app or nestjs app validate token against the auth0 tenant and the return the decoded token data in the user session so this is my existing auth0 app when i do the login then it is asking me to log in with auth0 and i, I choose login with the google okay so what it will do is it will has created my session in the next js application in the next js app i'm using next auth in the next auth you can configure the auth0 client id and a secret so that's a simple setup right i will also show you the code but our objective is to deal with the the next js apis how they are validating the token on the client end side either you use react or next js configuration is very simple here we are using next auth so you just need to provide in the next auth uh, auth middleware like in the auth route.ts you just need to provide a auth0 client id and a secret so this is how you will do the login now oh, what application i am configuring this is my application here is my client id and a secret id which i have configured in the client end side code so this is the place where the all the users will be managed and here you can check the whole user profile it has the email id and all the roles roles also you can manage through the auth0 and this is the your tenant name tkscharma.auth0.com and this is your signing keys this url we are going to use later this is very important these are the signing keys against which we are going to validate our token so you might remember that auth0.jwt json web token is a library jwt.sign and jwt.verify in jwt.verify we also pass the secret key similarly this signing key is the secret key to verify the token created by auth0 so here i'm using one existing application restaurant apis it's just a restaurant crud okay wait it has a controller and i will be adding the auth guard so this is the where we are going to place our logic apply auth middleware to all except the public health check route right so we have all the other apis i'm going to add the authentic uh, this middleware so what this middleware is doing this middleware is checking at line number 12 that authorization header is passed second is at line number 18 we are checking we are validating the token if the token is valid everything is fine we just need to do the next call the next method otherwise we will throwing x we will throw uh, simply is authentication token is invalid right that we will be just uh, changing we need to write the code we will just say unauthorized user so for that now we need to modify this method or geo authorization service dot in it right this cell check works so our application is working this search also works here search is not working because we are not passing the authorization header right so that that's a basic thing first of all uh, you need to pass the token then second step is we will validate the token and then we will tell you okay token is valid or not if token is invalid then we will send unauthorized user but for now you are not passing the token so here from the authorized top i will just pass the dummy token here it is missing auth header auth header is not being passed so let me check what is wrong okay now it is sending me properly here you, so now this authorization header as a bearer is being passed and it is sending me unauthorized user that means that method who is validating the token is sending it you are still passing the token but token is invalid so there is a different status code and different message now we need to just write this logic okay how to validate the token so this is what we are going to modify in the init method so in the init method what you are getting you are you are getting the access token so first of all you will get the token from the authorization header so this is the only code which is important because what it is doing is it is uh, decoding first of all getting the token because you are getting bearer and token string so the token string is the second part of the string separated by the space so you just need to get the first pa second part of the token so that will be the actual access token you will get and then there is a method you can write decode so get token is just giving you the second part of the original token string and here we are just doing a decoding the token so here we need to use these separate libraries Uh, to validate so json web token simple you already aware jwt ks rsa this is jwt ks client for auth0 to validate the token so jwt client and here you need to specify to get the signing keys actually because jwt provide these signing keys 
so here you need to specify a couple of argument like what is the uh, the signing url from where you are going to get a signing keys rate uh, limit how many signing api calls because this is nothing but an api call internal api call to auth0 to get a signing keys and this is the cache and uh, request per minute you can pass so this is the library for that these are couple of constants so here we have configured the client jwks client which is going to validate our uh, token token string which we have already uh, which we have already extracted from the bearer so here we are just promisifying the client client dot get get signing keys so this from this signing keys here we are doing a decode token which is extracting what is inside a token so we can use a json web token for that jwt dot decode there is a simple method json true so if uh, decoded is there so inside decode token also there is a header because the jwt token has a header body and so if decoded is null or the header is no null or key id is not there that means invalid auth token it is not following the auth0 token format we will just send unauthorized so here we will do get signing keys decode dot header dot key id uh, this should be a sync method so we need to put a sync function so we'll get a get signing keys we got the key from the get signing key method and we are passing the decode dot header dot key id before that we have already decoded the token which which is nothing but what token contains the token payload and here we will get a we get signing keys we need to async the init method for that so now we have async method async init and then key dot public key or key rsa public key so we got the signing key so this is signing key is nothing but a secret against which we are going to verify the token even in the json web token you have is actually jwt dot verify right there are two ways jwt dot sign but we are not signing this token auth0 is creating this token by signing it what we are doing only here is jwt dot verify right that is verify against a signing key and we just have a token string and we are just verifying it so this whole middleware is just using this method verify to verify this token against the signing keys provided by auth0 so we have this verify method separate what this verify method is doing is simply uh, we passing token string and a signing key and the decoded payload object because once the verification is done successfully we just need to return the decoded payload so here it becomes just a two lines of code jwt dot verify token string and signing key if there is any error it will return just unauthorized because it will go into the catch block if the verification is done successfully you just return the decoded payload object now the remaining thing is what you want to return in the session i mean decoded has a whole lot of information you just maybe wants to return only the auth0 id email all the role or user metadata or auth metadata this kind of information not the whole uh, decoded uh, token so now we will configure this init method here in the middleware now we are calling the init if it is successful then we will just call the next middleware but if any uh, any error is thrown from the init it is internally throwing the uh, unauthorized exception and here we are going to set the user session request dot user equal to user id so we will get copy the token so just copy the token and set that cop token in the authorization headers and here hit your apis and you can see my apis are successful i am getting the appropriate response i am able to create or access the routes that means i am getting this middleware is passing that so here is the whole payload which we are getting after doing a successful decode i mean first verification is done successfully then we are getting this uh, decoded payload and this is what we need from this we just need i think the email the roles information and maybe auth0 id because this contains the header which has a key id payload given name nickname we don't need all the information we just need to tell our uh, backend application that okay this is the email of the logged in user and this is the role of the logged in user this session information is more than enough to authorize at a, at a auth guard and to do any operations or extract the information using email because here we are not storing any user id and all everything is managed by auth0 so we still have a auth0 id here which we can use if we want to store or reference in our microservice so this is the whole data but we maybe we don't need the whole information we can just use the payload while returning uh, the decoded object so here 
inside this decoded we don't need to return the whole object we can we can target a specific things which we wanted to set inside the you request dot user information here the session information is the complete uh, payload right so even from the session we can choose what all information we wanted to set on the uh, user session so finally we are setting only this much information this has a role which is an empty string given name nickname name picture email i think this information is more than enough to validate a uh, user and we also going to populate the roles for role based authorization using auth0 so that's it let's take a look on authorization this is authentication which is just checking okay user token is valid and uh, i don't have any auth guard enabled so it will allow you to access all the apis but later we are going to add auth guard where we can have a role based authorization and not all the routes will be allowed for a particular role that we are going to do in the next video